Gus. This is Josh here from Castle Comics. Welcome to episode four of Back Issues. Um, thank you guys for taking this journey with me through Something is Killing the Children. Um, we are now on to volume four. So we will begin, get right into it, with chapter 16, or issue 16. Um, this issue pretty much open, opens up with Erica. She is pretty much beaten and bloody as a little kid. Uh, get a shot right here of it. And we see them, pretty much we hear Jessica Slaughter, who's a new character we introduced. We heard her mention in the previous volumes. She's uh, kind of mentioned just kind of in passing. Here we pick up with her talking to somebody off screen, talking about Erica, how she pretty much killed this thing or def like, you know, managed to hold it off by herself as a little kid with just a knife. She, Erica, looks at her uh, octopus plushie named Octo and realizes that the monster is now trapped inside of it. She speaks with uh, Jessica a little bit, and Jessica pretty much talks to her and says, you know, you're amazing, um, you need to come with me. She uh, asks Jessica what she did with Octo, and Jessica says, you know, I put the monster inside of it. And so she pretty much asks her if she has anything they can put it in, so she puts it in a piece of Tupperware and pretty much uh, keeps the monster there telling it to be quiet which is kind of funny she pretty much tells Erica explains everything to her kind of like Erica did with James that this is what's going on monsters are real they kill people but unlike Erica with James because I guess she had known what she had to go through being a little kid uh, Jessica invites her to go with her to the house of slaughter and then we kind of get the opening pages always something's killing the children pick up with a flashback of Erica and her little friend running from the monster her friend falls she tries to get to her but she can't and the monster ends up uh, killing her friend and she has to hide in a closet where she hugs her octopus plushie you know fearing for the monster and then we get uh, the monster speaking out of the top of where and Erica waking up where Jessica is telling her to wake up and she says, you know, they've got to Chicago, where is the city of the House of Slaughter is in. Um, they kind of speak about it. Uh, Jessica breaks down some of the stuff in the House of Slaughter, how like, you know, she's going to be kind of criticized because some of these people are raised like this and they're more fancy and she's not going to be in that kind of niche. So she's kind of going to get picked on. But she says she'll also have friends there. Um, because Erica actually notices that Jessica's tr kind of stressed and Jessica says it's good because she's perceptive that way and then she, you know, she just doesn't want Erica to have to go through what some of the other kids in the House of Slaughter are about to go through we get a cool panel of them pulling up to the House of Slaughter which we've seen from the previous volumes uh, we meet Aaron as a kid unfortunately, you know, way before his unfortunate demise in the second volume of Some of These Killing Children uh, Jessica tells Aaron to help her with her bags. Aaron's kind of cold to her at first, and uh, Jessica even tells Erica she can pick on him, but in a friend way, because they're kind of the only two black masks. Uh, we get Cecilia, who's a little bit younger, but she's a little bit older than Erica when we saw in the original, so we now we see her kind of younger, same as probably about Jessica's age, and she's just kind of furious that Jessica brought Erica back, because she's pretty much bringing back what they consider a stray to do this Erica's kind of a loose end we should have been tied up but um they mentioned that they have to put their masks on as they walk through so she gives Erica her first mask which does not have teeth on it yet which we'll get more into that later but um she pretty much tells her welcome home and that ends the first issue cut the black and go into the second issue chapter 17 we have Erica kind of waiting outside it opens up with her the dragon's office as Cecilia and Jessica are yelling and arguing in there we talk to she talks to Aaron a little bit Aaron kind of gives her a little crap so uh, they hear a scream where uh, <laughs> Erica kicked Aaron in the balls um, she gets we get a quick quick glimpse of the dragon which we've seen him before but uh, at this point Erica hasn't um, they pretty much tell Aaron, you need to go with Erica. And he says, I'm not going anywhere with her. And then 
Jessica pretty much tells him to cut it out. She's not in the mood. And they pretty much, uh, Cecilia reminds Jessica that they have to be up at 6 a.m. to take uh, Erica to the farm. So we get kind of flashes of different rooms, of different people in masks. We get a blue mask, a white mask. I uh, don't think we see, oh, we see the red mask too. So we see the red, blue, and white masks, which we get kind of a breakdown of that a little later on. Um, we also see that each of these rooms for the different masks have multiple ones. And when they get to um, the black mask room, which is what Erica is going to be training to be after her test, um, we see there's literally only Aaron, Jessica, and then another person introduced uh, named Adeline. Um, or Adelady. It's a very weird pronunciation. Um, she's in a wheelchair and she's not, she seems like she's kind of almost gone, but, uh, it's very, it's a very creepy moment. Um, Jessica promises her that she won't let anything bad happen to Erica. Um, this is where she kind of talks to Erica about the initiation that she's going to be going through. She can't say too much. Um, but she kind of gives her the backstory of how the Order of St. George came to be, where there was a dragon, uh, destroyed a town, and every night the town would have to feed their kids to this dragon to keep it from, to quell it, kind of, until finally, um, George showed up, or St. George showed up, and pretty much buying the dragon with his will, and took the dragon down into the city, controlling it, and then pretty much made the people... Uh, swear secrecy and then he killed the dragon in front of the people uh, that's where they re resurrected the first church but they know it is the order of St. George and that's kind of how that came to be and then started the monster hunters from there um, pretty much she says they're going to try to make you very scared tomorrow and uh, they're going to try to make you talk about our secret but you can't say anything about the secret um, and Erica asks her if it's going to hurt and Jessica honestly says yes um, but then she says, you know, if you succeed the, the test, you'll get this cool tattoo. And she kind of reveals the Order of St. George tattoo on her arm. <clears throat> which we've noticed from each uh, break page between the comics is that big uh, symbol. Um, she's, Jessica's pretty much a very motherly figure to Erica. She kind of expresses how she's, you know, she's like, I know a lot's happened to you and more's going to happen to you and I'm sorry. Um... And she just, you know, she just wants to wants her to succeed. Um, they go over to a shelf, and she explains to Erica about the totems that contain the monsters. Uh, we see Jessica's totem, which is a rabbit named Thumper. We see Aaron's totem, which is an owl named Hootie. And then um, Adelaide's um, is a dog named Whoopie Puppy. <laughs> so you get kind of a little shot of each of the totems. And so they put Octo... The octopus tied them up next to them so they can talk with each other. And Erica wants to keep it in Tupperware, but Jessica says she can't do that. Then we cut to uh, Air, uh, Jessica and Cecilia drinking in a bar where Jessica's just stressed. She's just kind of getting drunk because of, you know, just afraid. She, she's getting sick of this life, you know. She has to get through. She's what, what, we, what we've known Erica to be in the previous novels where she's just this loner and has to pretty much go and take care of you know kill these monsters by herself and watch you know kids get killed and she gets the worst of it she's the grunt you know um and they're talking about the chances of erica's survival out of this um we then cut to another flashback with erica um in her home holding octo being afraid of the monster outside her mom comes home her mom and dad uh to which her mom finds her friend and then as her mom's trying to holler for Erica, she finds out something's in the kitchen and it kills her mother as well. Um, then we get Erica waking up and Erin's sitting there in her bed and talks to her a little bit. And you kind of get a cool, like, you know, uh, just human moment. And just like we did in the original before Erin got taken out, kind of get, you get his human side. And he kind of warns her. He says, you know, the monster feeds on your fear. If you don't let yourself get too afraid, it won't get strong enough to hurt you too bad. And uh, he kind of gives her that advice for the next day. Um, and he pretty much apologizes to her and uh, says he's sorry about what happened to her parents. And he pretty much says, just don't die. 
because you know like all the, the other masks groups pick on me a lot and I don't have any friends so I would like to have somebody in the group with me and um he just pro makes her promise not to die and she promises him as we cut to into the issue cut to black all right going into chapter 18 and we pick up with uh one of our blue masks open up he is the uh pretty much the person on the farm that conducts these experiments um and we get a great little opening with him um Pretty much his opening, his day-to-day -day routine. He's getting up, <laughs> shower, and pouring coffee. His, you know, um, he comes out. He has a bunch of dogs on this giant property of a house with blue masks. He's actually one of the blue masks. Um, he's pretty much asking them if the slaughterhouse is ready, which is pretty much where Eric is going to have to go. Um, he says, "Good." We get uh, Jessica uh, and Eric are showing up, and she's very excited to meet this man. And talk to him and where he introduces himself to Erica as uh, Big Gary Slaughter. So Gary is kind of like I said the guy who puts all the people through tests and you'll find out a little bit more like I said about the masks. He's a blue mask. Um, he pretty much offers bacon and eggs invites them up. They kind of have dinner. Uh, she kind of gets the rundown of the farm as they kind of joke and talk and you know this is where they have people train. Erica asks you know they keep monsters here for training uh, to which Jessica kind of says she's that you're not ready for some things but yeah he just outright tells her yes this is where we keep monsters um, and he pretty much uh, she gets to see his dogs Barta and uh, Erica has this really funny moment with the dog where she he's licking her and it's real cute um, but then he pretty much tells her that he has to say uh, goodbye to Sparta right now and go use the bathroom and she pretty much says I don't have to go but he tells her you know I would go anyway because this is going to be a long day. Uh, they take her to this barn with the Order of St. George symbol on it to where he pretty much um, uh, Jessica talks to Erica telling her you know he's going to ask you what your name is you tell him you have no name and then he's going to ask if you have a totem and then you're going to give him Octo um, and she asks you know she says, I should have told you this sooner um, she walks into the barn and you get this really cool, the way this style of drawing is done. It's very dark, so it's kind of hard to see, but it's very unique. It's much different than what the rest of the book kind of is. Um, we have Bill in this kind of like ritual style uh, where he pretty much tells her to step into the circle. He asks her her name, family's name, which she responds, I have no name. And he says, good, hunters have no family. She says, do you have a totem? He asks, what's its name? And she says, it doesn't have a name either because she doesn't really know what to say. And he put, he says, you know, it's okay. You can call it what you did before. And then she introduces it as Octo. Um, he gets her to place Octo on the altar and pretty much gets her to think about what it had done to her. And then he re releases the monster for its essence to go inside of her. Uh, and of course, like, when he does... Um, it, uh, he uh, actually, you know, he also realizes releasing the monster. You even get a, oh, you get a, oh fucking hell from um, Gary realizing that this monster is not the usual monster for the ritual. It uh, goes inside of Erica, and Gary puts her on the altar and puts Octo on top of her for the trial. Um, he leaves, kind of a. Uh, scalding Jessica where he says you should have warned me he goes you know I thought it was going to be a, some half transform apparition like they pick for the recruits not a wild and powerful obscure type um, and he pretty much was like yeah I didn't know we were sending a girl to her death and he's pretty upset about it um, and pretty much he's just like you know you're not going to make me a good drink alone are you so she says absolutely not so they all head off uh, Jessica, Gary and Buck head off and leave Erica to her fate with the obscure type in her dreams. So that's the end of Look of the Black for issue uh, 18. Go to issue 19. Uh, we have Aaron waking up in the House of Slaughter with two uh, white masks kind of criticizing him and making fun of him. Um, they get kind of in his face and they, and they pull a knife on him. Like, they're very hateful to him. It's really crazy. Um, 
you know, he gets upset because, you know, they say, oh, well, that Erica got sent off to die. He tries to correct them and tell them that she's going to survive. Um, and the two crew recruits are Tybalt and Paris, and they are two of uh, Cecilia's recruits. Cecilia kind of calls them, uh, scalds them, and tells them, don't let me catch you in here messing with him again. Um, she pretty much tells Aaron to get dressed. And so there's been no word yet on whether Erica made it or not, but they are going to be there to either welcome her into the group or be there to clean up the mess if she doesn't survive. Um, and we get a flash of Erica in the barn and then her past again a little bit. Um, we see her seeing her mother and father dead and the monster get a big splash page of the monster killing her mother and father. Um, her mother actually talks to her or she fights the monster a little bit. And you see her stabbing the monster in the face. But then it cuts to um, her mother telling her to go get help and tell the neighbors. And so she breaks out. She runs away. Um, and then she kind of remembers what Aaron told her where he said, you know, some of it will be real, but a lot of it's just in your mind. And you can't, you know, she also remembers Jessica telling her about the oath of not ratting. And she realizes that this isn't what happened. This isn't how it happened. You know, she didn't get away and go tell the neighbors. She injured the monster and... Jessica showed up and she realizes it and she, you know, speaks to the monster as we see this giant octopus specter over the house in her memory. And she's pretty much, you know, telling it that, you know, it, it this isn't how it happened. My parents, you know, they died. Jessica came and then I defeated you and she trapped you in Octo. And, um, you know, he's pretty much says, well, you can save your mother if you do this. You know, I can help you. Um... And he says, you know, you can go get help. You can still have them. So he's just trying to trick her to get stronger. And she remembers her stabbing her in the eye. And then she remembers Jessica showing up and saving her as we get, like, the panels of Jessica breaking the door down and coming in and saving her. Um, and then we also see the panels of Erica uh, getting Octo from her. Uh, she remembers, she said, I gave Octo a kiss goodbye. And she remembers the hand of Jessica as Jessica uses the spell and traps the Obscura type inside of Octo. Um, and, you know, and she asks Octo if it feels sorry for killing her mom and dad, and then it says no. And then she says, okay, well, I guess then we can wake up. And then Erica wakes up in the barn. Um, and he says to her, you know, Octo says, they thought you were going to die, so they left you alone. And she goes, well, well, I didn't, so what's next? as we cut to black on issue 19 going into the last issue, issue 20. Um, we kind of have uh, Gary and Jessica talking and, you know, they, they've already kind of accepted that Erica was going to die. So um, they're kind of talking about it and Jessica's drunk already talking about how she just can't do this life anymore. Um, and you have kind of a good moment between her and Gary where he kind of consoles her a little bit and just says, you know, I hate, you know, I have to pretty much get the bodies of children who we train it, don't survive, and I have to get these monsters, and then when they get loose on the farm, I have to be the one to go and, you know, recover the bodies, so trust me, I understand, well, you know, this, it sucks, pretty much, he says, I feel, I feel you, lady, it sucks, um, Cecilia and Aaron show up, and they're all kind of talking, and like, you know, they're kind of being, like, really, just kind of, like I said, accepting Eric is dead already, um, and Cecilia or Air, uh, Jessica realized Cecilia brought Aaron there to specifically teach him a lesson, kind of to scald uh, Jessica for doing what she did about bringing somebody home that wasn't one of their picked recruits. And she gets kind of really mad about it. But before she can finish her argument with Cecilia, she heard, hears somebody say, Hey. And it's just Air, Erica saying, You know, so what do I need to do next with all the dogs surrounding her from the farm? It's a really cool shot. Um, Obviously, Gary's surprised. He picks her up and he's like, you know, he get, tells Buck to get the steaks because they're going to have steaks tonight and Erica's excited about it. Um, you know, Jessica's excited. And then, you know, he pretty much, Buck or uh, Gary takes Jessica in so they can get some um, coffee to sober up a little bit. Cecilia, you know, says, well done, which is like the first time we've seen Cecilia compliment anybody in this comic. Um, she pretty much tells Aaron to tell the uh, call the others and tell the house that, that you know, like, Eric is going to be there as a permanent residence. Um, Aaron says, you know, they thought you couldn't do it. They all thought you couldn't do it, but I knew you would do it. Um, she thanks him. Then he asks her where she's going to get her tattoo. 
and we see um, Gary giving Erica her tattoo. She gets it on her forearm of the Order of St. George. Um, he, he, also, and he also says, you know, that means you're a member of the Order of St. George. From this day forward, you'll take the house's name, which is Slaughter, the house of Slaughter, so she'll be known as Erica Slaughter, which she thinks is exciting. And it's cool, we get this multi-panel shot of um, Buck talking about how her life's going to be in the Order, and as he talks about it, we see this these things happening leading up to the Erica Slaughter we meet in the first issue. So it's really cool. Um, I think we also get some more backstory about her later on, which I'm excited to get into because like I said, this issue is where I've read through. So going on to next volume um, will be uh, me with you guys. So I'll be reading it new just like y'all did. Um, they talk about, this is where he explains the different types of masks. Um, there are the Scarlet Masks, which are the red ones. Uh, they pretty much keep track of everything. They're kind of the servants, but they're referred to as the servants, but their their function is to be the bookkeepers of the order. They keep the history, keep the records of what happens. Um, then we have the blue masks, the, the Azura masks. So the blue masks, uh, they're pretty much the ones, they are the blacksmiths of the order. Um, they build technology. These days they deal with computers. They can, they're pretty much the ones who can make like, you know, stories of this go away and keep stuff out of the media. And that's what Buck is. They also handle the uh, ceremonies and the trainings. Um, then we have four different types of hunters. There's the black masks, which is what Erica is. Um, and he says to be most blunt, they have the thankless job. They're pretty much the Swiss Army knife of the order. Um, they're sent to hunt alone. Uh, they're trained to take down monsters by themselves. Then there's the white masks. Uh, they're the pack hunters. They hunt the monsters in different packs. Um, and because of that, they hunt bigger monsters. And he even says, you know, uh, some of the white... He says pretty much outright tells her that the white masks are some of the biggest assholes in the order. He says they take down Ben Game, so they think they're hot shit. But if any of them found themselves alone with some half, what, some halfway dangerous monster, they wouldn't be able to cope. Um, then you have the silver masks that are the specialists. They're the ones trained um to take down the uh, more established monsters like ones that are more lore based like vampires werewolves he said you know they don't get they've only got two of them in the house of slaughter because they don't really need them very much anymore um but uh he said they're more you see them more in other parts of the world where folklore is more ingrained in their culture and then last but not least we have the emerald masks uh the green masks he says the most dangerous hunters in the order he pretty much says they hunt dragons so you get this cool panel breakdown of like the red masks, the azure masks, the black masks, the white masks, the silver masks, and the emerald masks. And this is a really cool page breakdown explanation. Uh, Erica's pretty excited about the mention of dragons, and she's like, dragons are real? And he's like, you know, we don't really see any in North America anymore, but uh, we do sometimes back in the old country and a few in Asia. Um, as far as the emerald masks, we don't see you know many of the emerald masks because those things don't you know exist hardly anymore. She Erica exclaims that she wants to see a dragon, to which Gary responds, "You and me both, kid." Um, and he pre you know pretty much um, at that point, um, Cecilia walks in saying, "Well, you're going to get the you know, see your wish in a manner of speaking." To which Buck says he'll get, or he says Gary says he'll get Buck to get the dragon's room ready. Um, he snaps a picture of Erica's tattoo and signs her name on the uh, photograph, which he has a wall, I guess, where he keeps all his recruits. Uh, and then Cecilia takes uh, Erica to meet the dragon. Um, he asks her if she likes gummy worms. And he kind of, you know, introduces his familiar to her and uh, kind of taunting it, saying, you know, I can't, you know, a powerful beast tamed by a little girl, you must be furious, to which Octo... Um, Exclaims, she's best to me once, but never again. I'll pick my bones. I'll pick my teeth with her bones th in the end. And he kind of says, that's the spirit. Kind of eggy knocked it on. Um, he kind of explains to her about a little bit of what happened in the barn. Uh, calling her a monster. He's like, you know, you're what we've been waiting for at the House of Slaughter. Um, he said, you know, it takes monsters to tame monsters. And she kind of gets, you know, a little bit upset with him. Um, and they kind of just have it out. And he kind of just is very cold with her. And um, he pretty much tells her that. And he goes, you know, she goes, I'm a girl. And he goes, no, not anymore, never again. Uh, he goes, I have very high hopes for you, Erica Slaughter. 
don't disappoint me. And he walks off. Um, and then Erica kind of has a moment talking to Jessica who comes in and she kind of is upset asking her if she thinks, you know, she's a monster, if she's a bad person. And, um, uh, Jessica tells her no, she doesn't think so. She says if anything, she wants, she wants to be, uh, she wants, Jessica wants to be like Erica, you know? She goes, are you kidding me? I want to be more like you, kiddo. You're so much cooler than I am. And Erica goes, I don't know. But then uh, Jessica goes, I thought you were perceptive. To which Erica kind of responds, yeah, me too. Um, she That's where she asks her if she thinks she's a bad person. Is that why she's there? To which uh, Jessica responds, I don't think I don't think so. She's like, I think you're going to be the best of us. Um, and she pretty much says, now let's get a move on. We've got steaks waiting for us. And then uh, Erica responds, yeah, okay. And we cut to black to end this volume. So that is the backstory. That was a little fraction of it, I'm sure, of Erica Slaughter. Um, this is a real fun issue, or a real fun volume. These five issues are probably my favorite in the story so far. But like I said, I also haven't read past this. So I'm very excited. Um, not next week, like I said, with the con being next week. I don't know if I'm going to get uh, volume five up next Sunday. It might be the week after that. Uh, but I might have some con um, stuff to put up for you guys. So we'll see how it goes. Also, this week I will be um, I'll be getting the migrating video up uh, Monday or Tuesday for you guys. This will actually probably be going up uh, early Monday morning, like right after midnight. So um, sometime I'll probably I wait till Tuesday to get the grading video up, and then Wednesday we'll have new comics, and then Thursday I'll be heading out for the con. So um, look for all that stuff coming up, guys. As always, I really appreciate everything. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, I definitely want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, these videos haven't been getting quite the hits I would like. So um, I know they're long videos. There's a lot of exposition. So um, if there's something else you would like me to do with this, or if there's something, you know, something that could be shortened, or if there's, you know, different things you would like me to do with it, I definitely would appreciate you guys comment and let me know. So uh, with that, guys, as always, keep reading comics and uh, keep reading back issues. So see you all next time.